let me put my full screen share on here. Can everybody see that? Michael, are you recording yeah. this? I was just going to ask, okay. um, let's see, an organizer is recording. Melissa, are you recording? Yep, just started it. Yep, great, okay. All right, so what, what is the, what is, this is a quick intro to just um, why are we promoting it? Because we get to say how um, our thought leadership impacts the community for branding and marketing. Our promise to you is we will have all the historically released versions publicly available. So if you don't have time or don't have interest or need to upgrade, you don't have to use, always have the old ones available. We don't have any licensing uh, requirements, no lock-in. You can come and go as you like. It's usable with a variety of different toolings. And what's in it for you? We hope, we hope that you can you leverage some of the thinking we've done over the years and jumpstart your project. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. <coughs> um, and we ask you to acknowledge it. If you're gonna use GIST, then use our namespaces. Um, and if that doesn't work for you, we have other arrangements that we can work with you on. So it looks like we've already started the recording. So let's get going. Um, so I was going to have two talks, two subjects today, but it, as always, I, once I get going, there's only really one. So what happens in our, in our everyday world here at Semantic Arts is we work for a large variety of clients and lots and lots of modeling challenges, large, medium, and small come up. And sometimes it's just small enough to make for a nice little presentation. So <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about how countries evolve. So what happens over time? Um, for just a couple of examples that get started with, Burma changed its name a while back. It's now called Myanmar, officially. Um, Soviet Union no longer exists, and there's lots and lots of countries and empires that used to exist but don't any longer. And then we have the other going in the opposite direction, um, East and West Germany came together. Um, now there's another very interesting problem that we'll get to in another just, but I thought I'd mention it briefly. Uh, labels, we had a, a lot of work with one of our clients. It's nice if, if you label like New York, if you just say New York, you know what you mean, but not always so easy. Um, and so we came up with a nice little solution for addressing that, which will be the subject of another session. So let's get back to countries. So countries come together. So East and West Germany here joined back together, I guess, in, after the um, Berlin Wall came down in 1991. Countries changed their names, as we saw a minute ago, Burma, that's where Burma is, which is currently called Myanmar. Um, and countries break up. So Yugoslavia, that's the example here, but there's lots of examples of countries breaking up into smaller pieces. Now, interestingly, this is a lot like people. People get married, they change their names, and then they separate. Go figure. Um, how come it's not working? Here we go. So what about empires? So this is a broad thing about change over time and governments and governing bodies and entities. So here's an interesting little bit of history about the Ottoman Empire. So in 1359, there was this tiny little dot in northwestern what is now Turkey. And then 1520, it was quite big already, well into North Africa. And it got bigger still. This is more or less at its peak. And then it started shrinking way down to what's less than Turkey today. And finally, we have the Republic of Turkey. So in principle, somebody might want to track that. There's a fun little video which actually shows this happening over time, which I won't go into, but this is made available to people afterward. You can watch, it's about a minute and 20 seconds. Well, there's other things going on, not just countries, but what about you know, various subdivisions? So for a given country, there are standard subdivisions, um, such as in Russia, they're called federal districts. In Canada, they're called provinces. In the United Kingdom, they're called all sorts of things, including kingdom, which is kind of fun. Um, regions, they're called regions. I lived in Edinburgh, which has Lothian region, the official name. And then there's counties, which is a different uh, level of subdivision. Then there's cities and there's things within cities called neighborhoods and townships. There's all sorts of things out there. Um, so let's just call them, I think this, this name comes from um, 
georegions or somewhere else. This is a nice name for this generic concept. Let's just call it administrator region, some area on the surface of the earth, which is administered by some, some body, some governing body. Um, so these, these smaller subdivisions might also decide they want to become their own entity. So state or province might succeed. People talk about Quebec you know, becoming its own um, country or California, there's some mention of that, or, or maybe the West Coast should become um, a whole separate country. Um, or maybe unincorporated parts of a county, for example, where I currently live in Newcastle outside of Seattle, it used to be unincorporated until about 1994. And then somebody, great wisdom, decided, hey, let's be our own little city and we'll, we'll do things our own way. So there's lots and lots of different things that happen um, over the course of life. Um, so the question is, how should we model this? And the flippant answer is, how long is a piece of string? So why is that relevant here? Well, the, reaction, the reality is, you don't know how to model something until you know what you want it for, right? So who might want this? Well, geographers and history buffs, somebody might really want to know, hey, am I living where the, where the Ottoman Empire used to be? It used to be in Venice. Venice used to be in the Ottoman Empire, so that might be cool. That might be relevant if you're interested in some ancient buildings or things like that. Genealogists, we're working with uh, someone now in that area. So they're, they're all kinds of interested in, in where you were from and what countries and everything else. Um, and more relevant to our mainstream clients, any global company of which there are hundreds, I suppose, if not thousands, um, that have a country's database, and they usually do, and they may be, somebody mentions the Soviet Union or maybe business was done in the Soviet Union at the time and there's a contract on the database and they don't want things to break. We need some way to handle that situation. It doesn't arise very often, but it does arise often enough so that you need to think about it. So who probably doesn't care? Well, real estate agents, they're just selling property. Um, so there you go. Possible use cases. Anyway, we, but for those of you who haven't been on here before, please jump in at any time if, if, there's, if there's something you want to contribute or if you need a clarification or a question. I, I was just going to say that probably real estate agents do care. They, they care more about oh. jurisdiction of their contracts and jurisdiction, mm. you know, the organization that manages the geo, the administrative region. Yeah, I was going to yeah. mention what you said, not to. I used to work, <laughs> developed a multiple listing service and one of our areas um, incorporated a new county. And so two counties okay. split. Well, there you go. <clears throat> and the property database needed to reflect that. Well, thank you. So there you go. You never know. Um, on a given date, so here's some possible questions that you might want answers to depending on <clears throat> who you are and why you care about it. On a given date, what country or maybe empire was a given place a part of? Um, for a given building, maybe you're interested in architecture or history. In what country was that building part of when it was built? When did a former country start or end? That assumes you already know it's a former country. What current or former country was a given country formerly part of? It's kind of like a generic history question. Or what current or former countries or empires is or was a given language spoken in? Um, so lots of different things. Or is a given country current? Is the Soviet Union even around anymore? I don't even know. Or Yugoslavia? No, I guess not. Let me go look it up. No, they're not. There's no yeah, Soviet Union. <laughs> so other, other things that you might want to know about related to names, a few things about names. So on a given date, what was the official name of a given country? So you might say, well, it's 90, it's 2010. Was it called Burma yet or was it still Myanmar? And you, there might be reasons in your business why you might care about that question. Um, or what's a common name? So Burma is actually, sorry, Myanmar is the common name, but the official name is actually Republic of Myanmar or something like that. Um, or what's the current official name of a given country, um, which most people don't know or care about, but it does matter in legal documents and things like that. Um, or what was the fish name of a country on any given date? So lots of different things you might care about. Um, or what's the former name? What are the one or one or more of the former names that a country may have had? Um, can anyone think of one or two other examples that I haven't thought of that you think might be interesting just to go into the discussion? 
Well, Michael, I, I, this isn't a, an additional one, but I think of, of the ones you've listed, the what, what actually drew me to this call a little bit was kind of the whole temporal nature of all of this, <clears throat> is that mm. the, 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 the composition of a country or an empire or whatever is, and, and kind of the, the temporal aspects of that is slightly different than on a given date what's the official name of a given country. And you know, so you you could actually have what is the name of a particular you know bounding box of a, of a country that can change at one rate of of you know one rate, and then your composition of what you know geographical territories you actually compose or comprise um, that changes at a, at a different rate. Um, and so, in some ways, the whole question of what is your official name as of a given date isn't actually all that much different than. Um, what is someone's um, married name or, or, you know, that, that sort of stuff, or what's your, uh, you know, what's, what's the color of your hair as of a particular date, but, <laughs> but, but, your, but, your, but your composition of, you know, what, what, uh, what parts make up the whole and as of a given point in time, that's a slightly different question. So I think you can that's take true. any one of these things and then turn them into a whole different set of uh, related questions, I guess. Yep, I think that's true. Any other thoughts or questions or comments? Before we jump yeah, the, simple, uh, the question would be, is Crimea part of Russia? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Or even some people don't accept the name Myanmar. Other people, no. I think that's a very political, cultural thing. Some people object to that. Michael, yeah. is the scope here for determining what the reason or what the circumstances associated with this transition actually were? Because I mean, some places get bought and other places get uh, taken over and other places do it in a voluntary way. Exactly. All those issues come up and depending on your organization and what you care about, you may have to build a different model to support one or more of those different things. Um, the, the, the particular client we worked with turned out to have fairly modest um, requirements, so we didn't have to get too complicated. That's kind of what this is all about. Um, let's look at what we actually need and then build something that satisfies that need. Yeah, and Michael, one other thing about the actual need, your, your original your original slide about needing to know how you're going to use this. Whenever I come to kind of temporal questions like this, uh, the whole notion of am I going, am I trying to use this ontology to infer information or am I just simply trying to use the ontology to state existing relationships? And, and I, uh, I'm actually really curious to see whether in your use cases you, you were actually trying to uh, to infer everything anything out of this. Well, that's or... a good that is a good one. You can't. Yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to that a little bit when I get to that slide. There are different ways to look at things. What you might care. What are the countries that had ever changed their name? Um, right. And so you could create a separate class for all the different. It's a new country. It's a former country. It's a it's a country with a new name, or you could just write queries to answer those questions on, on, on the fly, which is essentially inference. Okay. So I was oh, go gonna, oh, Michael, I was going to mention that names are official names and even popular names are relative to another country. So, for example, Myanmar has. Um, its own official name for itself, which is different perhaps from our official name for it when it was Burma, let's say. Um, yeah, there's this whole committee that gets, gets together and they have this matrix of all 200 countries. And what can you call that country in your country? You know, right. Oh, so it varies all over the place. I get, well, that's the language difference. It, it, no, it's not just the language difference, right? It's the, hmm. it's, like the Myanmar name, the name in Myanmar for Myanmar was presumably never Burma, right? It was always Myanmar. Mm. Well, it was, Bur it was Burma when the British run ran it. Okay, but it was, I assume it was Myanmar before we started calling it Myanmar. We, um, I don't know. Well, there, there are certain cases of that um, where we've sort of, I mean, look at um, not a country, but a city, Beijing, we used to call it Peking, which I don't think the Chinese ever called it. It was just, we became more attuned to the local uh, designation 
we've done that on a number of occasions. Um, and then there are maybe countries where we don't recognize the same borders as others mm. or the, in the country itself. So we would have different names. Um, then but, but this, this committee that gets together and decides how each other can call each other, it's mostly based on things like we have this convention that we like to end countries' names with IA, you know, Yugoslavia. Oh. So in our thing, yeah. it's Austria, even though in Austria, it's Ost Ostreich, you know, but we don't like, that doesn't sound very good. So we like to end a lot of things with IA and this little committee says, oh, okay, if you want to end it with IA, go ahead. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Wait, is that a hypothetical or is that real? No, there's really, there's this committee that gets together somewhere in the world and decides it's like a 200 by 200 matrix of how each country is going to name each other country. That gets exponential. My head well, hurts. No, it's, not it's just 200 times 200. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You're right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Going to move on. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's kind of fun. Um, so you think about if you're going to approach this for you for some particular organization or purpose, you know, think about what your civic needs are, and that will kind of out of that will emerge some core concepts, things that you know you're going to probably have to worry about and have at some level or the other. Um, so the core concept here really is that of an administrative region. Um, so what is that? It corresponds to now in GIST. This is a, this is really we base everything off of GIST. So there isn't just a class called georegion. Some of you may recall within the last year or so, it was some months ago, but not that long ago, Ted gave a couple of very long and very fascinating talks about how to um, do georegions. So just to remember, georegion in GIST is simply corresponds to a two-dimensional area on the surface of the earth. And so an administrative region is just one of those two-dimensional areas which happens to be the border of some body, some governing body. So the United States has a bunch of islands, it has a bunch of regions, um, and all that collective area is a, is a georegion. Another thing we talked about is these administrative areas that have, have subdivisions. So again, in Russia, you have a federal district, the United States you have a state, in Canada, you have a province, there's all kinds of things. And then you go below that, counties, cities, and so geonames is a publicly, um, is a, is a major thing that tracks a lot of this stuff and they have introduced this notion of a level so you say a province and a state and a federal district for their respective countries are level one um, and then level two might be county in one place or, or city in some other place so you track the level that you're interested in. what else do you have to make us all work you're going to have to have some degree of start and end dates um, and you're going to have to represent some notion of splitting <clears throat> and unification Interestingly, you can just define a country, country region as a specific kind of administrative region. And if you have this notion of level, um, you can just say, oh, well, country region is just an administrative region that has a level of zero. So we've actually used that for our, um, for our client ontology. Um, so here's the sort of things you might want to track. These are the things that arise. You say, well, is this a current country? What does that mean? OK, a current country. It's, it, it currently exists. There is such a country right now. And however it came into existence, we're, we don't care. We just want to know what is the current country. So this is something you might want to get your head around. Or maybe this notion of nothing special, just an ordinary country. What does that mean? It's a current country that didn't get split off from any other country. It wasn't created for unification. And it never changed its name. Just ordinary, everyday country. Most of, most of them fall into this category. Or a new country. Um, country that broke off from another country or is the unification of other countries. So new is relative. It's new for a while and then it, it evolves some more and it changes around again. Um, so, but any more snapshot in time, these are things that you might want to ask questions about. Or a former country, what are all the former countries? Soviet Union, Yugoslavia, there's a long list of them. And do you want to include empires? We, I'm sort of ignoring that, but it came up in a discussion with one of our other clients. Um, who tracks that type of a thing right back through history. Or maybe you care about what are all the countries that change their name? This might be important for some purpose or the other. So you need to be able to know, if these are the types of things you care about, then there's, you need to be able to know 
um, you know, how to track them. So you might say, hey, let's just create five classes. I used to do this until Dave came along and said, no, 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 Mike, we don't need all that stuff. So, okay, there are these things, but you don't have to create a class for every, every little thing that you think about that seems interesting. Um, instead, what you could just say is, well, these are phases. Let's just essentially have them as tags, if you like. It's a phase that a country could be in. You can tag a country to be in a given phase if you want to. And you compute, you can compute what phase it's in <clears throat> based on what, it, what information you have about it. This comes back to Matt's question, do you want to do inference? So if you care about answering a question like what are all the former countries or, or what's a country with a new name, you can do all that. So how do you do that? Well, current country, you just say, oh, find me all the countries that don't have an end date. Therefore, it's current. Um, what's a new country? A new country is just any country that has links to former countries and it doesn't have an end date. And those links to former countries could be by unification or, or uh, splitting up. If you want to know what all the former countries are, you can just say any country that does have an end date. Um, a country with a new name is a country that has a former name. An ordinary country is some country that does, for which all those things do not apply. So now you can write queries and do inference, do whatever you like um, to get information if you care about these particular distinctions, but you don't need to create classes for every little thing. Was there someone wanted to comment there? Okay, clearing a throat. Great. <clears throat> um, Hang on so a second. Next yeah, Hang go on ahead. A second. I lost track. Was the country the geospatial region, or was the country the organization that manages it? And well, it was which actually, that's a good. The, the, uh, no, the country. I'm saying thank you. That'll become clear in a moment. But thank you for asking. The country is the administrative region that has a. Uh, you know what? That's a great question. I think I might not have made that clear here. What, what should be the case is that um, in this case, the country, it's a country region. Well, you could do it any which way you like. We created country regions and didn't have the administrative area. I don't know, Boris, you're not on the call. I forget exactly what we did. That's a great <laughs> question. Though. Let's that move on and maybe yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I, have an, <clears throat> I have an answer. As well, go ahead, Ted. <laughs> um, and, and I'll give you two examples that, that justify the answer. Uh, I treat a country as the combination of a region and a government that governs that region. Uh, so that if you have the region without the government, that's not a country. And if you have the government without the region, that's also um, not a country. But uh, the other thing, Ted, is that it's accepted by all the other countries. Because unless they kind of have diplomatic relations with it, it's not really. A well, that, it, it, it's unfortunately that's unfortunately not so simple because yeah. you have many disputes of sovereignty. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, for instance, uh, the Palestinian state is accepted by many, but not all. Some yep. uh, countries mutually disrecognize each other. Uh, and yet, how can you say that they don't recognize each, you know, that country A does not recognize country B sort of establishes that country A and country B are countries, even though they don't recognize each other. But the, the main point, uh, <laughs> if I can finish my original point, uh, it is that um, you can have a region of the world without it being a country. Uh, yep. Antarctica is a fascinating one. Uh, by the Antarctic Treaty, Treaty, there's no country located in Antarctica. Uh, and yet it's a region. You can have a government without a region that happened in World War II with the French government in exile and the Polish government mm. in exile. So those, there you had governments without countries, without regions. Uh, so that's why I define a region, I'm, I'm sorry, a country as the government plus the region. If they're divorced yeah. from each other, they're not countries. And And it's also very useful because it's not really a country that takes actions, but a country's government that takes actions. So mm -hmm. you attach all the actions of a country to its government, but it's still not a country unless it also has a region that it controls. Hey, and Ted, can you yeah. describe just real quick when, when you define a region? Are you talking about just a, a geospatial region? You know, like yeah, a, a portion of the Earth's surface, and uh, it could be discontiguous. Okay, be, and so, so it could be region or regions. Right. Yes, like Alaska, 
apply. Okay. The region in totality, yes. Yep. And you can even have, again, the sovereignty issue. Uh, you might have a country that has a, a, a contiguous region or a few contiguous regions over which it has undisputed sovereignty. And then it might have an island in the Pacific over which it claims sovereignty, but so do two other countries. Uh, so sovereignty becomes a separate question. So I agree with what Ted was saying. This can't, the thing you're talking about, Michael, can't be just a geospatial region because then they don't change. They don't have right. names. Unless it's an island that sinks to the bottom of the ocean, it's, <laughs> always there. it's always there. It's the same region regardless. So I think you have to be talking in some sense about a political entity. Yep, that, that's what I was going to say. And and in, and in some ways, it brings back to the whole temporal nature is that I, I would think a region can have a name and the government can have a name and they are not necessarily the same thing. Right, right. But but again, that there are different levels of recognition going back to, you know, that kind of Montevideo Convention and other things like that, that you've got to be able to add that because there are, like with Palestine, places that are recognized well, by some, but not by others. It's also this, clear on we certain this, we had this discussion of recognition. I forgot whether it was here or at uh, one of our internal GIST review meetings, but you know, it, it, it's got to be, uh, I think, we, oh yes, we had this discussion in regard to United Nations because GIST used to define an entity, unite, an individual United Nations, so that it could say that a country government is something recognized by the United Nations. And then we decided that, well, no, that's not the only uh, recognizing body. There are different recognizing bodies, um, but we have to, uh, to, what can be a recognizing body, because not everything can be, you know, the city of Seattle can't be a recognizing body for um, countries. So, so, defining what the recogn the legitimate recognizing bodies are is a problem but in a, in yes, a sense in a, in a sense yes that that can be that distributed because if your client um decides they're going to recognize some you know entity as a country then in their data mm -hmm. it, you know whether whether or not anyone yeah. else in the rest of the world is doing it so um you know the the data need to be okay. responsive not that's, you know uh, that's a good point yeah. Yeah. authority yeah so I, I, I agree and, and i also think that I'm making the model has to kind of take account of these things that that we might not like but they're there yeah i think the way the model needs to do that is to recognize that sovereignty is a uh or recognition of sovereignty is a relationship between countries or between uh, entities such as a country and the United Nations. It's not essential to uh, what a country is. And, and an example of that is the country of India was arguably not sovereign for the years in which it was controlled by the British Empire. And yet I think we would agree it remained as a country. So sovereignty is really about relationships between countries, not about a country per se, in my opinion. Well, recognition also. Yeah, is, recognition, is... yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why we remove United Nations, uh, recognizing right. or acknowledging that recognition could be uh, a relationship to any or to many sorts of other entities. Yes. I was uh, uh, addresses, like if you're going to ship something, a lot of times we need to mention the country if it's out of the country where it's coming from. Um, but a lot of times we may not be sending to a country. It may just be a region that's not considered a country. Um, I'm assuming there's some places that, you know, have a region name, but it's not really classified as a country. <clears throat> oh yeah, I mean there's tons of them. things like the Permian Basin has a name and it's not a country. So in addresses, I think we typically call them countries when you model an address. Um, would that be incorrect calling it a country then? 
Well, addresses are almost always rooted either to a postal organization or to some, you know, other city organization. You know, once once you get outside of that, it's just latitude and longitude, which is also an address. But but really, the, the addresses that we think of are convenient ways for an international postal mm -hmm. organization to get a letter to you. Good yeah, examples of Diana uh, was uh, here. I was in ocean transportation and it was always address, but you can link that to a lat long and then you know tie that to a GIS where you'd figure out, you know, it might be a port that you're going to, but eventually that truck's got to show up at a facility which has an address. So I guess there's just different use cases for being at a country level. And then I've heard of some um, groups. Um, I guess Pro Profium in Finland that have tied their geographic ontology to GIS database. So I guess it just depends on your use case. And you have cultural oh, regions like uh, Kurdistan. Uh, hello? Oh, can you hear yeah, me? So yeah. yeah, so I've uh, been trying to move this conversation on but then my microphone stopped working can you hear me now yeah yeah okay great yeah let's move on this has been interesting but i want to come back to today's original question and the punchline for this discussion as i see it is that you might there are two different things out there and the question is whether you need to represent one or the other or both and for this particular client they're mostly concerned with the actual regions and they're less concerned with the governments and the governing bodies um, so they simplified their representation to distant food regions. But I'd like to move on in the interest of time. Okay. And, and just, just as a quick aside, part of the reason they did that was they have at least half of all their regions are not administrative. Yeah, that's actually also true. Indeed yeah. they are, but some of some of them are, some of them aren't. That's yeah. true. Right. Um, so another question is how much do you need to track? So um, do you need to track all the changes over time? And so for Complex things like Yugoslavia, it was really a nightmare just trying to figure out what the most recent change was. That's quite a lot of, amount of effort, and we didn't get into that in any detail. Um, or maybe just the most recent changes, which is what we ended up doing for this particular plan. Um, okay. So the model turns out to be quite straightforward after all the thinking ahead yeah, to get I'm, one I'm, yeah. I'm slide 16. Is that where you think you are? I'm on 18. Um, where's, where's everybody else? I'm seeing 16. I'm on 16. Okay, 16. so something's going on with my sharing. Um, how do we how do we update this? I could stop sharing and start again. Right. <clears throat> That's probably the best. So, Michael, just for a second, I'm glad you're still on 16 because I don't know if you mean phases. Um, I mean, according to this, a country can be in. To, I mean, a, two more than one of these can apply to a given country. So it could have That's a new. It could have, That's true. They're yeah. not, they're not mutual exclusive. There's a little hierarchy here, sure. Okay. Yep. But let's get, let's, I want to continue this because we only got about 20 minutes. Um, but how, how can, why isn't mine not working here? This is bad. Melissa, can you unshare me or how do I unshare? I'm not used to meeting. Um, I think the screen button at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, move your mouse. You should see a screen button show up near where your mic and your camera buttons show up. You might be able to. Oh, uh, let's see. Toggle that. There's a little screen button with an arrow. That's too bad. Um, possibly. Mine just looks like a little TV screen. It's in settings. It's not going to be sending us. If you move your mouse over the list of people, do you see a little bar come up at the bottom with controls like mic, camera, screen? I see. Okay. If I click on the people, then a big long list comes up. If you just move your mouse over that whole uh, go to meeting oh, there's screen. Chat, there's chat and there's camera and audio settings. And when I move my mouse over any bits of the GoToMeeting app, I get some uh, controls that slide up from the bottom. Do you see that? Well, I'm not getting that. Okay. Else. Are you, is, 
There's one at the bottom next to microphone camera, and the third one is screen. Well, there is a th there is a second way to do this, which is someone can grab the screen. I think the organizer has All to right. do it. Uh, okay, actually, just I'll share your screen your as the thing. organizer. Yeah, it's Melissa has to make it. will just share again. It looks kind of. <clears throat> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> now, Michael, you don't show up on the list anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, he went bye bye. No, there he is. MU, or is that Micah? Could be Micah. W. Yep, that's Micah. What if you oh, held a presentation? Back. I'm back. Can you hear me? There he is. Yep. yep. Oh, did someone else bring it up from the, our shared drive? Nope. Just uh, yes. try resharing. Okay. Okay, yeah, I need here to be centered again. <clears throat> here we go. I think. Have a great meeting. Cool. <laughs> okay. Can you see the uh, slide yeah. now? How much to track? Yep. Okay. Yep. Don't know what How much to track? We're back, on, we're back on track now. Okay. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> Let me do this one. So it turns out the model is surprisingly simple. We have two classes, administrative region and country region, actually. So Dave, you asked a great question. I should have called this country region. That's what we actually have it as. Um, there's two object properties. One to say I've been, I'm formally part of something else or I'm the unification of something else. And I did this on purpose. I didn't want to say formally part of another country because you could be formally part of, you could use this for marriage for marriages for them. I was formerly part of this relationship and I unified with this other person, but it's not a great fit, but I wanted to make it general because you could be part of lots of different things. Um, and three data properties, form, official name, start date, and end date. And this is the model. This is the model, the whole model, and nothing but the model. It's really quite straightforward. Rebecca, did you have a thought real quick? Yeah, I don't think this is sufficient, sorry, because if you want to know formally country A was formerly part of B, don't you also want to know when? So it has to be a materialized relationship. And That's even the it. same with even the same with date, you may want to know when and to, to relate that to when it was a part of some other country and what its official name was then. So it's true, just to say, but we didn't. formally isn't sufficient. It's not sufficient for some needs, but it was sufficient for the needs of this client, which were very modest. Right, but in general. That's true. I agree with you. Michael, I have a quick question. In um, yes. in GIST, we do have something called a geopolitical region. We don't have administrative region. What What's the difference? Uh, why not use geopolitical region? Historical. Historical. I think it, administrative region was a term that was used somewhere else and we probably borrowed it. Okay, but it uh, was, uh, and, and I, I don't know if you're using the latest just either. Um, I think geopolitical That's region was around. Question. Probably since... would change it if I, if I had known about this region. This region. Okay, okay. Yeah, good, that's a good point to be reminded of. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think administrative region is a geo names and an ISO thing. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that's why we did. Maybe we could change just to be more aligned with it. Come to think of it. Um, but, but I'm going to carry on because I'm in, in the interest of yep. time. Um, 10 minutes left, to roll. so I'll run through this a little bit more quickly and hold off on some of the more interesting questions. So here's just an example of how this would look. So Myanmar has a pref label of just Myanmar, has an alternate label of Burma, has a former, initial, former official name, which is Union of Burma, and it has a current official name of Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Um, so then how do we do unification? Well, okay, so federal Republic of Germany has a start date, but it has no end date. So that tells you information means it's current. It's the unification of two countries that do have end dates. And the other way around, um, Yugoslavia has an end date, therefore it's a former country. Croatia is a, has a start date and no end date. Therefore, now the, the inference here, by the way, is assuming a closed world. So you have to be careful about that. Um, um, 
in which Sparkle does close the world. And Slovenia is formerly part of it. So this is pretty much basically what we what we ended up with. Quite straightforward. It met the needs of the client. And here's just an example. I just Googled around and went to um, Wikipedia and looked up these. So these are the actual dates as far as I could tell from the Google, the tables on Wikipedia, I should say. Um, so, hey, Michael? yeah. So as a as a data type pro property, the formal official name, is this suggesting that if a region, I don't know, let's say go, goes through three different name changes, does that end up meaning that those are three different regions, even though it's really one region with three different names? You can have th many different name changes as you want, and you can keep them all around, but we're not, for this particular model, that'll come up in a, a later slide, for this particular model, we're not tracking the dates. Because they didn't, we asked all these questions, like Rebecca's made some good points. We asked the client all these questions. Do you care about this? Do you care about this? Do you care about this? And they cared about a few yep. things. That they didn't care about a lot of other things. <clears throat> but the okay. interesting, the nice thing is this model is 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 um, easy to e evolve and add those extra things. So that's the actual model. So what's involved in deploying the model? I'm going to hold off questions unless they're really just clarification. We'll get to the end. Um, so there's two things that need to happen. So you need to update the existing region data so that things like Yugoslavia can be there, things like Soviet Union, Myanmar, track all that stuff, use this handful of new properties. And then you have to have a process that says, okay, so now next week, a new country comes into existence and we want to be able to add that into the database. So we want to have a process for doing that and making sure that that happens correctly. Um, <coughs> oops, why is that? Um, Okay, so the update process, what does that involve? So it means here you are, we have all this stuff now, and we have to move to where we're representing all this new information. So you have to identify what state or phase each country is in. Is it current, ordinary, former? Did it have a name change? So you want to see where you are with all these countries. Um, and ordinary countries just stay, stay the way they are, don't do anything. Um, unless you somehow needed to have start dates. That was another question we asked them. This is, do we want start dates and all these things? In principle, we probably should have them, but they said, in practice, we don't care. So we said, okay, because that's just a lot of work and nobody cares, nobody wants that information. So that's made, that was one of the reasons this ended up being a very simple solution. And then you say, for all the new and former countries, research how they came into in and out or out of existence. And what other countries did it involve? This turns out to be not so easy as you think. I spent quite a lot of time researching Yugoslavia because apparently I didn't even know this. I'm not a history buff. They had several different machinations. And I thought, and then I asked the client, I said, Do you care about like what happened you know, three machinations ago? And they said, No, just do the most recent one. That wasn't even so easy to figure that out. But anyway, so that's a bit of research you have to do. So we went ahead and did that. Um, get the start and end dates and then update the data using new constructs. It's just basically means add a handful of new triples for each country. Um, <clears throat> so then when you evolve, you need to know what to do when each of the three kinds of changes happen. And again, it's quite straightforward. So when there's a split that happens then the new country that splits off from an existing country, you give it a start date. Whereas normally we don't worry about start dates, but in this case, you do give it a start date. Um, and then you give it a formerly part of link to the original country. And then the original country is now a former country by virtue of it getting an end date. <coughs> Neurify works in a similar way, just kind of the symmetric reflection. Um, so the new unified country gets a start date and it gets its unification of links to each of the unified countries. So think of the Germany example. And then the unified countries that no longer exist each get an end date, thereby making them former countries. Um, the new name, it's just a simple triple. You add a former official name link and life is good. Oh, and you probably have to change the name of the existing country too. You change the original name and then create a former link to the, to the old name. Okay. So here's now a few things you can do with this. <clears throat> and we've just got a few more slides there. So you could say, find all the current countries. So select country where country is a country and it's not the case that it has an end date. Or find all former countries and when the end date was. So that's the same query, but you return more information. Um, I won't go through all these, but let's see, there was another. Or when did, you could say, what did a former country split into? You could say for a given former country, what did it merge into? Um, and other things you might want to do, find all okay, all the countries that are in each of these different categories. 
Um, or you might want to just do things in your everyday business and you say, you know what, for this, we don't care about former countries, so don't even include them. If a, former, if a country shows up that it turns out to be a former country, don't even show me, I don't want to know about it. <coughs> um, interestingly, without trying, the model did, does support a few other things, uh, just kind of because, an accident, if you like. Um, a new country can evolve to become a former country. So, for example, if Slovenia, which is a new country that split off of Yugoslavia, if it were to split into two new countries, then it would do so. It would now have an end date. It would have a start date because most countries don't have start dates because this is a new country. It does have one. So now it has a start date and an end date. So now it's no longer current. <clears throat> but the links that it had still remain. So there's a little bit of information we get from, from multiple steps. Most of the time, we don't carry information from multiple steps, but sometimes it just happens for free. Um, a new country can be created from administrative regions that are not countries. So the examples we've spoken to has always been about countries. But in actual fact, you could have a county um, break off and become its own country. Or you could roll a county from some other place or some portion of another place into your current country. And the model supports all that. So the reason it supports all that is because we have this core notion of an administrative region. It could be the highest level, which is country, or it could be any of the other levels. So the model will support all that. <coughs> I just mentioned that. Um, and of course, you could have more than one form of name. Go ahead, so there's a comment out there. Well, uh, never mind. We're, we're short on time. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dan. Um, so what does the model not support? It doesn't support when the name changed. So this is, I think, some, the sort of thing Rebecca was wondering about. Why doesn't it support that? We asked, do you need that? And they said, no, thank you. Um, so therefore, if you don't have the name, you don't automatically have the order of the prior names. You could record the order separately, but they didn't care about that either. Um, I actually find, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Michael. I, I find that actually yeah fascinating for some reason is that it's not just this scenario yeah. but that that we, we all lead ourselves into believing that the the knowledge of when these pivot points happen is hugely important and i think it is hugely important but whenever it comes down to it the organization never actually needs it time but you know you just don't know like we're talking to uh a company now or an organization that's very interested in genealogy and they did mention the Ottoman Empire and they said yeah we actually care about that I'm like oh that's cool wow yeah. this could be fun well, I think I think it's, it's it's a tough nut to crack and so no one I think people can people in convincing themselves they don't need it so they don't have to crack that nut um because I think yep. to to keep that information just from a storage point of view it's just orders of magnitude more triples that you have to keep <laughs> um, exactly a couple more final things and we're just about done so um as with any modeling problem something usually shows up and you scratch your head and you say oh gosh this is annoying if we do it this way then we have this problem if we do it that way we have this problem so here's one little stupid thing that arose and i still don't know the right answer and maybe there isn't a right answer people just have to choose so in the case of this client they have their database of Lots of different regions, as Dave said, many, most of which are not actual countries, but many of which were. Um, so they already had, for example, for Germany, for the United States, for all these different countries, they had PREF labels, and they were using PREF label for the name of the country. That's what you'd expect. But we also had just name in, in, in just ontology. So names, most things don't have names per se. Your laptop won't have a name, so you don't give a name, but it's going to have a PREF label of some sort or the other, because everything should have a prep label. Um, and so then I created the class, sorry, the property former official name. I made it a sub property of just name, just because that's what I do. And then I'm, um, you know, a just guy. And then I realized, well, wait a minute, that's going to mean having two of everything. So maybe we should make so we make should we just forget about just name and have former official name be a just be a prep label? An alt label. Uh, so this is just it. I forget what we actually did. I thought Boris was going to be on the call, but he would answer the question for me. But, but anyway, it's just a little annoying thing, and I don't know what the thing is. Maybe we don't need just names at all. And if we had a, this is a good little discussion that we can have. Go ahead quickly. So, so Michael, I think the 
key to your question is in the statement you made that some things have names and some don't. So this table has a truck label, but it doesn't have a name. A country has a name. So if we call them all prep labels, we don't know which are actually names and which are just labels. That's true. I yeah. think what we would have wondered though is we, we said, you know, all these names are already prep labels. We don't want to create a new thing called the just name. And if they were both data type properties, we could decide to make one a sub property of the other, but we can't do that because one's an annotation property and the other's a data type property. So it's annoying. I we sort of sidestepped it by saying, okay, we're not going to model these formally as just names because it really doesn't matter. But it's a little bit un unsettling. Dave, I heard you saying something. Yes. So a name is not an annotation property because it's an actual exactly exactly. A real... so maybe, but let's move on because in the interest of time, so this is a little bit over. The other thing that arose, which we had a whole session about some months ago, short, small number of months ago, was we have just start and just end, which point to time instance. Um, but in this case, we decided to create data properties that point just directly to the date. There's a whole thing about this. And I think this is the wrap slide. So summary, countries are just like people. They come together, they change the names, and they break up. How do we model this? Well, it always boils down to what does a particular mean? client need in a particular situation, um, identify the key concepts, make the model as simple as possible. Um, and, you know, years, for years, we just did a lot of modeling and we didn't do that much deployment. But now, modeling is just a part of the bigger picture. In fact, oftentimes, most of the work is in the deployment. You make a nice little model and then you got a lot of work to make things happen to make it real. Um, so the observation that's kind of the striking for me, when you look back at that one slide, that model, you say, that's the whole model, are you kidding me? It's embarrassingly simple. Um, but it did take a while to get there, and that's often the case. It reminds me of whoever said it, you know, I, I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. So I could have made a, a stupid model that had all kinds of complexity in it probably quickly, but it took a while to get it nice and tight. And with that, I wish you all a happy break coming up. Questions? We're all we right over time, but anyone's welcome. I don't have anything on at the moment. So anyone's welcome to stay on. I'm scared people. when you say that countries are like people that can come together and split apart. <laughs> well, I was just, I just sort of noticed it when I had those three things. And so I Actually, that was most people don't come together and split apart. Right. That's what I'm saying. Well, they do in one case. In the case of conjoined twins, that's the only case. Of so the yeah. people themselves don't come together. They come together and form and form relationships. But yeah. then the land doesn't come together right. either. They don't form they other people. Yeah. Michael? When, that's, when you, that's, that's a good point, Devin. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. When you, when you raised when you raised the idea of, of you know country splitting and you said there would be an end date on the original country. But if Alaska were to split off from the United States and become a, an independent country, would yeah. we have an state on United States? No. No. You know, no. Um, so that, that's where I think there's a, there's yeah. a uh, the, the pattern you're laying out requires a little more elaboration. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I think it could if you took into account that it is a geographic area and uh, the administration, the administrative piece, because the geographic area has now changed once you split the Alaska off. I think that's totally counterintuitive, though. It I, is. I the the, the name the name of United States may stay the same. So does the government. Every, I mean, aside from the fact that you have a couple right. less leaders, but I think that's not really what's going on. Right. But wouldn't the start date on Alaska and the fact that it was formerly part of the United States be enough? You don't need the end date on the United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, what yeah that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Just in a different form. Yeah, for this client, that's what we would do. We'd that straightforward. But yeah, I mean, if, if someone really wanted to model this, like you said, with the Ottoman Empire, it would be modeling the government organization. For this period of time, they had Egypt, and this period of time, they didn't have Egypt anymore, and then they had Alaska, or didn't have Alaska, and, you know. So it's the it's the relationship of the 
organization to the territories administered that's changing over time. And that's exactly the same thing with the Alaska example. To go with the person example, if I lose my, my finger, I'm still yeah. the same person. Yeah, the manager of people is pretty limited. It, it really boils down to how you define country. Right. Exactly. And for the, exactly. And for this client, as we talked about earlier, they care mostly about the region, not so much about the political entity. Political entity is important for contracts and lots of other things, but particularly right. based on this client was strong, they it was less of an issue. Right. Yeah, I mean, you have to pick one or the other. There's only, there's really only two things that's going on here. There's geo regions and organization, and you just have to pick one. Or well, have both, and say one governs the other. But most of the time, you don't need that. But some of the time, well, Ted has some experience. I think there may be times when we need that, but try to avoid it. Try to pick one or the other. In this case, we just pick the region. We don't care about the administrator. Can we cope with territories with this, Michael? Do you think? Yeah, the territory we might, right? might sort of get into the Antarctica thing as well. Yeah, there's that. There's the notion of it, like the little town I live in called Newcastle, named after Newcastle upon Tyne because we have coal here. Um, you sound a bit muddy. It, it, it broke off from unincorporated King County. Um, which so is, is that so these unincorporated areas they they sound like they're little territories they sort of exist but they're part of a bigger thing but they don't have any specific subdivision yeah. of it. I'm struck that a lot of these questions are sort of meteorological in nature and I'm wondering if it just has an explicit meteorological representation in which you could form it is part of. So in other words, his client and most of the time if, if they're so they do have all this US states and they have the Russian federal districts. And we use the relationship just direct part of for that. Would that apply here in terms of to have an evolving myriology? Yeah, but we're not tracking what was true at a given time. We're just tracking what's true now and what was true last time if there was a change. Yeah, so it's sort of a temporal myriad topology. <laughs> yeah, if you really wanted to do this in a rich way, you might have thousands of temporal relations. This particular entity had this name over this period of time. This particular entity had this region over this period of time, and it could get pretty complicated. Yeah. All right, with that, I will wrap, and thank you everyone for a lively session, and have a good time.